let's talk about congruence modulo n. This is a fundamental topic in number theory, and it's very useful when we're interested in the remainder when a number is divided by another number n. This is read as a is congruent to b modulo n, and it has a very similar meaning to the equal sign. a equals b means that a and b have the same value, and a is congruent to b modulo n means that the remainder when a is divided by n is the same as the remainder when b is divided by n. So you can think of congruence as meaning an equal sign but for remainders, and the modulo n part meaning what you should divide the number by to get that remainder. For example, 5 is congruent to 3 modulo 2, because 5 divided by 2 has a remainder of 1, and so does 3 divided by 2. Another example, 15 is congruent to 3 modulo 12, because 15 divided by 12 has a remainder of 3, and so does 3 divided by 12. This is the simplest way to understand congruence modulo, but it gets a bit confusing when you start thinking about negative numbers, because we're not really used to thinking about remainders when we divide negative numbers. For example, is negative 1 congruent to 11 modulo 12? Try this one out. It's not that hard, but it's definitely a bit more confusing than when dealing with just positive numbers, isn't it? A more intuitive way of understanding congruence modulos and negative numbers is by visualizing a clock. Here is a standard 12-hour clock, but we'll change the 12 to a 0. This new clock represents congruence as modulo 12. The way to visualize a number of this clock is as follows. If you have a positive number, then you move the hour hand clockwise by that number of steps. For example, 4 means 4 steps clockwise, so the hour hand points at 4 o'clock. And 14 means 14 steps clockwise, so the hour hand lands at 2 o'clock. For negative numbers, you move the hour hand counterclockwise, so negative 4 means the hour hand goes to 8 o'clock. We say two numbers are congruent modulo n if the positions of the hour hands corresponding to each number are the same. For example, 15 means 15 steps clockwise, so it corresponds to a position of 3 o'clock, and so does 3, which is why 15 is congruent to 3 modulo 12. Similarly, negative 1 would be congruent to 11 modulo 12. Can you see why? Negative 1 corresponds to moving the hour hand counterclockwise by one step, so it lands at 11 o'clock. Therefore, negative 1 is congruent to 11 modulo 12. This gives us a more intuitive grasp on what negative numbers modulo n means. And in this case, dealing with negative numbers becomes just as easy as dealing with positive numbers. Now if we want to take modulos other than 12, we just have to change the clock from a 12-hour clock to an n-hour clock. For example, for congruence modulo 5, we would have this clock. For congruence modulo 15, we have this clock. Generally, for congruence modulo n, the clock would have the numbers 0 up to n minus 1. Finally, we take a look at the formal definition of congruence modulos and why it is equivalent to our clock method. Formally, we say that a is congruent to b modulo n if n divides a minus b. But take a look at what this is saying. In our 12-hour clock method, this just means that a minus b is divisible by 12, which means that the positions of the hour hands of a and b differ by a multiple of 12. But what this is saying is that you can go from a to b by taking sets of 12 steps. And since taking 12 steps doesn't change the position of the hour hand, Think of it as 7 a.m. is the same position as 7 p.m. This just means that a and b are in the same position. Hence, a is congruent to b in our clock method as well. So the clock method is equivalent to the formal definition.
In practice, we would always use our formal definition because it's much faster and easier. For example, to see whether or not negative 1 is congruent to 11 modulo 12, we would just have to check whether negative 1 minus 11, which is negative 12, is divisible by 12 or not. Since the answer is yes, we know that negative 1 is congruent to 11 modulo 12. However, it's also nice to keep this clock method in mind as it reminds us of a more intuitive approach to congruences. A lot of times in mathematics, we often get bogged down by formal definitions and lose sight of what the definitions are actually saying. So keeping this clock method at the back of our minds as we deal with congruences will give us a reminder of the core essence of congruence in a more intuitive and visual manner.